Welcome to the NXT Review. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by another one of the Dudley Boys, Michael Sidgwick from What Culture, to review everything that happened on last night's episode of NXT. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Dressing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Mm. Where we do daily wrestling podcasts, where we not only review the show formerly known as NXT 2.0, oh. but also on our alpha. I don't know. EW Dynamite! Pay per views, premium live events. We have interviews, round table discussions, and a round up the week complete. We get a quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. As I said, then, enjoyed by Sidgwick to review NXT. Another class show. No. I mean, that's all the prelude we really need, isn't it? Yeah, like, I honestly was searching for takes when I was watching this. Mm -hmm. Actively searching for takes, and very few came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, a lot of wrestling on this show. A lot of wrestling, (laughs) with a mediocre stripe, and, uh, yeah, I had to do the... I had to, like, put the phone under the couch. (laughs) So just on it. It's just now, I assume by that you mean like the couch pillows, but in my head, you're lifting the couch up and sliding your phone. Well, no, 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 no. So you've got like, what, about two inches? So it's off the ground. You can like, oh, yeah, things I see get lost mean. under. So I put the phone under there. <laughs> just so it'll be a bit of an arse on yeah. to get it. Just so I have to like, at some point, I'm going to have to clockwork orange myself <laughs> to watch NXT. It's so easy. Just go, right, here we go. Rewinding. I'm already <laughs> up early enough. Um, I passed by without much in the way of incident this one. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Yeah, you could. Um, You're lying. You're being facetious. But I be, it's Disingenuous. A, it's a good job I did. And on, especially on the second watch through, uh, I have picked up something that I'm going to get very excited about and you're probably going to shoot down quite understandably. Well, I'm glad you found something because I, I got little out of this. Okay. So I'll say, well, have some fun. Yeah. Let's but get Maybe it. we'll see some friends. <laughs> You know, we'll have some fun, see some friends. Maybe we'll get a special visit along the way. Well, you know, that's what I'm, I'm really hoping for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the show opened uh, with a grudge feud. It is Roxanne Perez versus Tatum Paxley, of course, after Perez attacked uh, Lyra Valkyrie last week. Mm-hmm. Tatum Paxley was defending her honor and was very angry about what Roxanne did. So she, Paxley tries to run in the ring as, as they make their entrances to open the show, but Perez attacks her outside, chucks her inside, starts the match, uh, and she's targeting Paxley's arm. Uh, as she did with uh, Lyra Valkyria, uh, modifying arm drag. She's trying to work, you know, really injure it early on. Um, Paxi fights back, but she's favoring the arm. Um, but she hits an Inseguri. It's a modified power slam. Um, but the finish comes. Perez whips Paxley into the corner, arm first, hits her with pop rocks, uh, and then gets her with the cross face. Uh, and Tatum Paxley has no choice but to tap. Um, post-match, Roxy gets on the mic and says, it's been one week. She's not waiting any longer. She demands that Ava, she hasn't got a surname, she's the rock star and the general manager of NXT, comes out and gives her the title she deserves and the one she never lost. But here comes Lyra Valkyria. She's back. She's got her arm in a sling, but she's back. She jumps in, attacks Roxy, uh, but Roxanne Perez shoves her into Lyra Valkyria. Uh, it sort of shoves Lyra into Tatum Paxley, I should say, takes her down, rips off the sling, cross face on the floor, and officials have to break it up. And Roxanne stands over her, with the title. Yep. Uh, perfunctory by the standards of NXT's in-ring. Uh, the post-match angle had minimal heat. I do not believe any true hatred exists between these two synthetic performers. Um, and uh, Yet another incredibly contrived... You're standing in the worst possible place for some friendly fire. Yeah. Uh, really? Or was she accidentally standing there? That's the... You know. No, no, no. What, what, do, what do you mean... What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, then I think she's on the up and up all the time, Tatum Paxley. So, you know, no, I don't know. I want you to explain. Lyra Valkyria, like, cost of the tag match. Maybe her opinions have changed on the person that she's weirdly obsessed with. I don't know. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Mediocre to perfunctory wrestling. It's one of those where, like, if I if I watch a good wrestling match that I like. One of my favorite things is to talk about those things, Mm -hmm. and I kick myself when I get home if I I forget like a key detail that really like enhanced my enjoyment of the match or something, yeah, something like that. Correct. Uh, With NXT, I can't remember. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy if I remember anything. (laughs) There was. It's just so factory settings, production line wrestling. 
Um, mostly. Though I, I think there was a good Matrixy spot that Tatum Paxley mm-hmm. did and, and does, but it was okay. It was okay. It, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It wasn't great. Okay. Uh, we go backstage. There's the metaphor, including, of course, no, I'm down. Um, he says, last week, Trick attacked him from behind. He can't wait to get his hands on Trick. And Lash is like, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on him either. And we're all like, all right. That went over your head, though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, wait, you, you, you're not fighting him tonight. Exactly. Let me um, illuminate Thank what you, she yeah, meant. Yeah. So when she says, I can't wait to get my hands on him, uh-huh. it means she wants to caress him in a sexual way. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. After the kiss. So I don't know if that, if that means, you know, you know, like small of the back mm-hmm. or hands around his neck or maybe hands pressed down on those pectorals. Oh, yeah. And there's a bit of on top action. Uh, she didn't specify, but I'm assuming it's one of those things. Yeah. Uh, then who shows up? I don't know. I've Alpha, forgotten, a- I've forgotten. Alpha Academy. Oh my god, this is weird because it's like, where did you come from? <laughs> and it was like, how dare they? They didn't it, correct me if I'm wrong. There's history between those two teams. Yes, they had a little mini program or yeah. whatever. The idea that oh god, we're getting this again. <laughs> it's like a card on Omega Five was built on Dynamite last week. We're getting a continuation of the Metaphor versus Alpha Academy. But they say they're not here for uh, for them. Um, but Otis does say he's what a callback. Otis does say he's jelly of Trick Willy. And Metaphor are like last night has got no chance. See you later. Um, and then we go to the doctor's room. Lara Valkyrie is getting her, her injured arm checked. And uh, Ava, no surname, Rockstore, NXT GM, mm-hmm. uh, goes to check on her. And Valkyria says, make the match for standing to deliver, oi, 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 um, <laughs> against Roxanne Perez. And Ava says, okay. It's, it's so easy hmm. being... It's a, Book by numbers. Yeah. Being a WWE general manager has got to be the easiest job in the world. I would say this is uh, not exactly, you know, not what's not, it's not rocket science. Yes, to use the obvious, I'm not an, uh, a brain surgeon. Mm-hmm. To use the two cliches, but my God, you just have to wait for these people to exchange lines of stilted synthetic dialogue. Take it in turns to beat each other up because there's no real verve or spark to the angles. Yeah. Mm. Wait for them to do that and then say, oh, have the match. All just lands in your lap perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely easy. Mm. Um, when you're Ava, she hasn't got a surname. She's the daughter of The Rock and the NXT of course, yeah, yeah. general manager. Uh, so Booker T and Vic Joseph. <laughs> oh, teach my moment! Teach my moment! <laughs> They're trying to run through the show that we've got to look forward to. I'm I'm right there with them. Uh, but then Josh Briggs interrupts them, grabs a mic, steps in the ring, uh, and he wants to talk about how Oberfemi uh, damn near put Brooks through the ring. Um, <laughs> he says, don't worry, Brooks Jensen's going to be fine. But he was not happy about the fact that uh, Ober did it with a smile. Um, he dares Oberfemi to try to do f- the same. Oberfemi's not his mate. Mm. He tries to do the same. So dares him to try and do the same to him. Out comes Oberfemi. Who says, uh, I'm surprised you didn't enjoy the match from last week, but I do enjoy, you're right, I do enjoy testing a man's limits and pushing him to the edge. Uh, when I step in the ring, there's no room for emotions, only results, and my results speak volumes. He's not wrong there. Uh, he says, Briggs is a man of courage, and steadfast, uh, and Briggs cuts him off saying, you think you're the baddest person here uh, until you meet someone a bit tougher like me, basically. I'm Josh Briggs, I'm the man of mayhem. Uh and this is NXT where I throw hands. Isn't that Wardlow's nickname? I don't know. Well, he'll be there soon enough, so. Um, Come on, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hang on, there's a button for this. And I mean, <laughs> folks, where's the lie? He challenges over Femi to a North American title match. And Femi's like, well, don't say I didn't warn you. And then here he comes. Oh, boy. Die, Jack. I love Die him. Jack. Steps to the ring. Uh, he says, Oba, you're the man of destiny. But not the man of memory, clearly. <laughs> Got him. Uh, because last week, I said I'd be the man waiting when Oba was done playing around with Brooks Jensen. He says he's ducking him. Uh, Josh Briggs called Dijak wannabe shaft. Dijak says, I don't know if you can see this, bro, but I'm white. 
uh, get lost, Briggs, basically. This is about me and uh, Oberfemi. Ober says it's not between them. It's uh, with Ober and everyone else, basically. Dijak gets in his face. Briggs shoves Dijak into Femi. There's a brawl that breaks out. Femi clotheslines Briggs out of the ring, and officials have to break it all up. Giddy yeah. with excitement off the back of this. Yep. Yeah. A couple of a, a couple of notes. Mm. One, um, they are making Uber Femi talk too much, and he sold too much last week. Already. The Goldberg principle is in effect. Mm-hmm. So that sucks. Mm-hmm. So he's to really like Oberfemi, but you knew this was going to happen at some point. Just this some point is happening now. So that's a shame. Talk too much. Uh, betraying that aura, that presence. It's like I'm not I'm more scared of him until he says scary words mm-hmm. because the scary words happen to be scripted by WWE writers who are not good. Mm-hmm. So that stinks. I'm not happy with that development at all. That it diminishes my enjoyment of the shoe. Um, some of the in te- some of the comedy here was just bad, just bad. Here's another thing as well: is that uh, later in the evening, Ava, she hasn't got a surname; yeah, she's yeah. a rock's daughter and the general manager of NXT. Um, intimated to one Duke Hudson, yes. Um, that you know, play your cards right, and you could be orbiting this North American title picture ahead of or at stand and deliver yeah, yeah, could yeah. you um i know you lean more towards wwe it's it's fine everyone's got a preference yeah. but part of the problem with you leaning towards wwe and not AEW is that you have an inability to use google but i am showing you how to do it could you go on just type just click on it so it highlights the text yeah yeah in the in the search bar okay the browser yeah, Google comes up automatically. You don't have to press anything. Whoa. Yeah, could you Google? That means type in the search bar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Duke Hudson WWE. Duke Hudson WWE. Thank you. Uh, what is his build height, please? It should be in a, a sidebar. It's a feature of Google, meaning basically you only have to shift your eyes. Um, I would say about five degrees to the right to um obtain some information. Yeah. Um. He's 6'5". Well, 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 well. Dijak's also fairly tall, correct? Oh, yes. Josh Briggs... A lanky boy. ...is a lanky boy. Uber Femi is a unit. Say it, go on. NXT's doing meat madness, aren't they? (laughs) Battle of the Giants! This is going to be amazing! (laughs) It should be! They're doing meat madness! Yeah. I'm so excited. I looked, I don't know, they weren't, and and they added Duke Bloody Hudson potentially to the mix. I was like, well, of course I was like. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I thought that, the exact same thought of, they're a lot of big lads, aren't they? They're doing meat madness, guys. And it just so happens, I mean, Otis is in and around NXT as well right now, so he's not necessarily tall, but he's a big boy. Yeah, yeah, he's like a, uh, a steak, could he be? Fill it. Rump? No. Okay. Like fillet. Okay. Like fillet's is big, a good fillet. It's like, uh, it almost looks like a ball. It does. Like a, a ball like a squash. You know? uh-huh. It's like in a fillet. Filet mignon. So uh, after this, we cut to another bit. I'm going to a French restaurant uh, at the end of the month. Oh la la. Ooh, la, la. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks like a very rich menu, but very tasty. Ooh. Tell us what you or you have to get that review when you get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be like, what crisps did you eat? <laughs> was the bread Sauce. on? Sauce. <laughs> Pamphlet and his dryness. <laughs> so I was a little bit creeped out by what came next. Because uh, Sean Spears, he's doing things all weird and different. He was watching telly straight on. Which I've never seen anyone do that before. And no. he sat on a chair. <laughs> like that. Like Saved by the Bell. I'm like, it's not how you sit on a chair, you crazy bastard yet. Well, is he being crazy or is he just trying to, you know, reach the kids by being a little bit mm. unorthodox, unlike those other stiff authority figures in their lives? Yeah, maybe. Or he's just unhinged. Um, does uh, What's up's down to him? What's down is up. Well, it's appropriate for who could be facing next. Yeah. 
Uh, he says, oh, that's it in its purest form. And I was like, oh. Don't just sing me again. <laughs> that wasn't the it he was talking Yeah, no, no, about. that is what it means, guys. If yeah. you go back and watch like 1997 to what, 2000 WWE, mm-hmm. and then 2006, and 2009, and you go back and watch the X and they say, suck it, suck it, suck it. We did a deep dive investigation <laughs> last year and we determined that by it, they mean their cocks. Got it. Um, he said, uh, pride comes before a fall. Such a shame. And he leaves. What does that mean? Well, I we have to tune in next week to find out. That's the hook. And they got me. So it's the thing that you were talking about at the start of the show. Oh, no, no, I was no, going to no. say. Far, there's a far meatier worm on my hook for you. Um, <laughs> he leaves. And then <laughs> Joe Gacy just slides out and goes, but is it? He's back. You've obviously done any, Can you imagine a feud between these two? Jesus Christ. I was thinking Stan Deliver's already... Does they go home at night and say, it's some good work today? Do they know it's... Try not to create more work for my uh, uh, editors here. But do they know it's... Because <laughs> it is. Do they think it's doing high art? I mean, a lot of artists aren't appreciated in their time. You've got to look back and... To be honest, I feel that way about myself sometimes. Indeed. Uh, we got a recap of Trick challenging Mello and then confirming the match is going down at Stand and Deliver and then we see Carmelo Hayes hey, showing up. Where? Oh, sorry, Stand and Deliver. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Carmelo Hayes shows up with his security detail. Uh, and then we got our first tag team qualifying match of the evening. It was Axiom. No! And Nathan Fraser. Well, I'm cleaning windows. Versus Miles Bourne and Charlie Dempsey, the hardcore catch crew. Like, the thing is, like, you could, says, Ilya, Axiom, Nathan Fraser, right? Mm-hmm. In his own way, Bron Break is awesome for the job he does and for the role he portrays. And uh, Roxanne Perez, despite, you know, not being as hot as she was about a year ago, which... I'm basically thinking is Charlie Dempsey the sixth best wrestler on the show. Like some of his pinning combinations well, and is the way he maneuvers himself into applying submission holds. It's like he's in the wrong company. Mm. It's baffling that he's in WWE, right? He does not belong there. He should be in like a Japanese company mm. or he should be doing stuff for Deadlock Pro. Like, he should be the wrestler that 38 ex-message board diehards are convinced is the best in the world. Yeah. He should be the next Timothy Thatcher, basically. What What are you doing here? <laughs> Arguably having the best match on this show. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> strictly speaking, he kind of does that most weeks. Yeah. He performs on it. He's really good. Like, I think, do the recap. Okay. So uh, it was Dempsey and uh, Axiom who started it off. Um, Nathan Fraser comes in, hits a nice kick on Dempsey, takes it to him. Axiom uh, comes in. Fraser sends uh, Bourne to the outside, and they hit dives onto Bourne and Dempsey, who are both outside the ring. Um, When they get back in, though, Dempsey takes back over. Um, He counters an Axiom pin beautifully into a German suplex. You're right. He's really good. Um, Axiom gets sent to the outside, where the rest of the no-quarter catch crew are there. But uh, nothing happens. Just it takes us into a break. When we come back, Axiom and Dempsey are going at it. Um, a bridging fall away slam got a two count for Dempsey. Axiom fought out of a submission though, and they go back and forth with chops. And then there's a hot tag to Nathan Fraser. Nathan Fraser, who takes them both down with a double drop kick. He hits a running shooting star on Bourne, almost gets the win. Um, goes to the Phoenix Splash. Bourne avoids it. Um, Fraser goes for the springboard dive, but that gets countered into a catching power slam was great as well. Axiom throws Dempsey onto the pile, though, to break up that pin. Axiom hits an avalanche Spanish fly. Fraser hits the Phoenix splash on Bourne. Axiom finishes it with... No, sorry. Axiom gets rid of Dempsey with the golden ratio, and Fraser pins Bourne to qualify for the triple threat match to see who goes to stand and deliver. It's a bit uh, TNA pill, these. uh, Shawn Michaels is very similar to Vince Russo as a puka. Can't see like that. It's ridiculous. No, you you will. Well... So, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've just prevented yourself from doing something ridiculous. I just, no, it's just... It's just no, but why can't you do that all day? Hmm? This match was, I would describe it, 
succinctly as uh, exciting, if not outstanding. You'll never remember it. It won't trouble any... won't be the best match you'll see on free TV this week. No. But, you know, it was well worked mm. and lean, and there's some cool stuff in it. It was, it was, it was good. It was mm. good. But, like, I just feel like if you've never watched Charlie Dempsey and you're only aware of him through our... What is barely a review of the show? <laughs> yes. And, like, you might get the impression that he's incredibly... He's an incredibly dull technical wrestler. He'd probably be half correct. But, my God, he's there's certain things he does where it's like, well, no one's kicking out of that. Mm-hmm. Or no one's escaping that hold without, like, really stretching a muscle or, like, maybe dislocating something. He's... It's just... I watch Charlie Dempsey and I think, like, what are you doing? Like, what he's are you doing in Japan here? briefly, didn't he? He was in that. No, he had one match. Yeah, or one. Or t- he had a, maybe one or two matches. Um, Noah. Um, and the thing is, it's like he's learning a trade that a, a specific genre of wrestling that will never, ever, ever, with his quality, his style, like the world would have to look drastically different if what he can do suddenly becomes hot or big enough to headline WrestleMania. Yeah. And it's like, if he does that stuff on Raw or SmackDown, you'll hear a red piss on Khan. Yes. He's not... Unless you fundamentally change the psyche of the WWE fandom, this guy, with the style he works, is never in one million years going to get over in WWE, right? As talented as he is. Oh, he's brilliant, yeah. So what are they doing? What are they developing, in, developing him into? A failure? I don't know. Because that's what it looks like to me. He's doomed. The guy is doomed. He's completely doomed. Like, what, are they, what are they doing? He'll always have the Heritage Cup run. So It's like... WWE are harsher on the talent than we are. Well, mm. you, you're a mark. But as I am on the podcast... Yeah. Are you dooming this poor guy? So it's a really complicated tournament, this. Is he Shawn Michaels as Vince Russo? You've got, each got, you got qualifiers to qualify for a triple threat to see who faces the wolf dogs that stand and deliver. But later on, Alpha Academy... Like, Vic and Bottom. Like Vic Venom. Uh, Hamflip, you would like that. Yeah. <laughs> he's, no, he's working from home today. That's the reason he's not here, by the way. Um, but... Yeah, now potentially Alpha Academy could be insane into it. I can barely keep up here. Um, right. <laughs> with the children's TV program. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. It's, well, let's, it's let's, convoluted. Mm, let's move on now to something we can always rely upon, and that is, of course... Hey, Dijak, take those stupid sunglasses off. We're inside. Wagner Watch. Come Tuesday. Um, Sad. Oh, p- p- troubling paradise here. Give you love. So they they recap what happened last week with Lexis King and oh god, not Von Wagner. Von Wagner's manager who's called, of course, Robert Stone. So uh, they recap that and then we get a video from NXT Anonymous showing Von Wagner. Robert Stone. <laughs> I'll do it once. I'm not a I'm not a performing uh, I'm not a circus animal. He, uh, pronouns pal, I mean, of course. Robert Stone. Yeah. Robert Stone. Uh, is pissed off uh, at Von for carrying him out like a baby. Uh, Von says he's trying not to embarrass him. He's going to make it right. Do, do his voice. Hmm? I am trying <laughs> not to embarrass you. I will make this right. Robert Stone. And then... Robert Stone. Yells at Von to do whatever he wants and just storms off. Oh, no. The good thing about an act being on the way out is that what if they come together and it's like a jubilant scene oh. ah dad's just like Von Wagner and Robert Stone me and they're two guys who they found each other when nobody else would they came together forged a strong pretty heartwarming friendship and that montage on the football field yeah yeah, yeah. I mean so it's, it's affecting I'll tell you who else you like, the Wolf Dogs. Uh, Baron Corbin and Bron Breaker interviewed about the Tag Team Contenders Tournament. Uh, and The russo pilled tournament. Yeah, Corbin cuts cuts her off, uh, but Breaker says she's probably just mad about having to pay for dinner last night. God, I 
God, I'd love to just have a camera crew following these two around as they go up to gym. I thought you were going to have a beer with these guys. Oh, I'd like to hang out with them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Alpha Academy show up and say, yeah, they want to earn their place at Stand and Deliver. Oy, oy, oy. Um, and they challenged Corbin and Breaker to a match next week. If they win, they'll be added to the NXT title match. Hang on, say it all again, mate. If they beat the Wolf Dogs next Who's week. Who's their pronoun, boy? Uh, Alpha Academy. Right. If they beat the Wolf Dogs next week, they're added to the tag title match at Stand and Deliver. Oy, oy, oy. Okay. Bron accepts. Baron isn't happy. Is that a way to make the club more interesting? Maybe. So why book the f***ing club in a match then? Yeah, you're right. I'll agree with you on that one. Um, yeah, the match is set, says Corbin, and despite the fact he's not best pleased about it all. Um, Bron puts over uh, Otis and Akira to always incredible athletes, but says next week's going to be spear, end of days, and it's over just like your dreams. But we don't try on our own dick previewing that for next week. No, there's a lot I've got to say. <laughs> Uh, Sol Ruka back in action. Great to see her back in a ring. Uh, it. Taking on Brindley Reese. Great. Uh, some phenomenal acrobatics to start this off uh, from Sol Ruka in particular, which prompts Reese to do that amazing cartwheel of hers. Uh, she gets Ruka in a headlock. She fights out of it. There's a flip by Ruka that got an X and then led to an X factor for a two count. Uh, Brindley comes back with clotheslines and a body slam and a handspring clothesline. She gets Sol up on her shoulders, but Sol escapes. Put Reese on the top for a chop and a big straight jacket slam. She has the double underhook suplex, gets shoved into the corner. Brindley charges, but Sol dodges and hits the Sol snatcher for the one, two, three. And wouldn't you know it, Sige, post-match, Blair Davenport attacks her and hits her with the Kamigoini. Yeah. <laughs> Suck my cock. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. I swear to God. Dead man walking. In your dead uh, man, you <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right, they're just taking it in turns to beat each other up. Mm. I've got a great story. <laughs> Kiss my ears. In your uh, dramatic reading and your recap of the match, right, you fail to capture. Uh, it comes about the couple of clotheslines. Hang on. Well, yes, I, yeah, you're right. Hang on. Yeah, no, I am right. So one of them does a clothesline to the other, and oh my god. It's like, well, time to bump. It's like, I can, all right, you've moved your hand a little bit, right? Time to bump. And then it just falls over for nothing. It's not get, at least wait until the point of impact. It wasn't even a weak clothesline, it was a nose line. Nice. No, it wasn't. I've got to do, I've, I can do better than that. Um,. A uh, nah. blow this line, as in the air is blown into. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of anything I could do with lariat. Okay, Larry Nat. Hey. Yes, thank you, Nicholas. Not just a pretty face, and a, with an excellent haircut now. Hey. Oh God, I our trip to Philadelphia, of course. Uh, moving on. Oh. Oh, my God. So the match was bad, just to uh, oh, yeah, clarify, yeah. Moving on. Gigi Dolene's backstage. She's chatting with Ren Sinclair uh, about her match with Ariana Grace last week, uh, which, of course, ended by a low blow. And uh, Grace walks in and says, well, rest decision's final. Uh, my low blow was accidental. Yours was intentional, so come on. Uh, but she says, bringing out the lady... In Gigi, it's going to be hard, but worth the task. She calls Gigi Georgina. Love it. And she pulls out a sash that says Miss NXT in training. We got a sash, baby. And that's just the start. Yeah, uh, I am. Uh, yeah, this is bad. Indentured servitude angles are... I only just had one. I'm so excited for another one. What was the other one? I remember Tiffany, you probably... You probably uh, laughed so hard you forgot. Because, like, you know, and you get that rush of euphoria. She's cleaning out all the horse poo, and then she falls into a bloody bucket of water. Yeah, this is uh, it's just bad. It's just bad. I mean, there might be some amusing bits to it, but I'm not, I'm not amused. <laughs> I am not amused. I'm just not amused, man. <laughs> uh, we see a distressing video next. It was uh, Ridge Holland on Instagram saying his effort to redeem himself isn't going the way that he hoped. Uh, and his match with Sean Spears last week proved that. He needs to be honest with himself, so he's going to do what everyone wants him to do. Right. 
I didn't expect to be kind of, ah, oh, experience an emotion. <laughs> yes. When it comes to Ridge Holland, um, there's something about, you know, how do I put this right? Oh, do what you all want us to do anyway. Go away. Ah. Oh. I mean, maybe a few people like you. Yeah. Don't say the entire world thinks you're rubbish. Mm. I'm sure there's some Brawling Brutes fans out there. Yeah. It's just like, everyone has to do what you want us to do and quit. Oh, don't quit. Yeah, I feel bad now. I feel bad now. You're good at rugby. Yeah. It's good in WCP. Well, he had one match in WCPW. If Did I he? Right, yeah. All right. Because he definitely passed the airport test because he walked past me and I was like, bloody hell, look at this bad lap bloke. I mean, I'm taller, but you know. That's just what everyone wants us to do anyway. It's, oh, I don't know, something about yeah, that. Yeah. Got me. Um, time for the highlight of the evening. The family come down to the ring. And there's four of them now. Tony D, the Riz, Luca Crucifino, and our favourite Stax. Yeah, uh, Stax is the best. Yeah, and he was doing some great, you know, he's not, he didn't say a word on the mic. So I've, I've been really practising my impression, but... I'm not going to get to break it out this week. Ah, uh, you're not. Why don't you just pretend he said something? No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but he was doing brilliant sort of... He wasn't just he wasn't just meeting the ring. He was adding real colour to the picture that Tony was painting. He just uh, stood there on a hat, I think. Did he do yeah. anything else except that? He was just gesturing like things like that when they were talking about how, how Luca <laughs> Crucifino brings the smarts. I love him. I'm really scared about bumping into him over WrestleMania weekend. We'll see him every week. I know, but like in a more of like an official setting. Where Do you think not, he might like be I more... I mean, my blankers. Do you think he might be staying in character more? Yeah, I think so. I think he's going to be more... Because he's a little bit more... And he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to mess up by getting in trouble talking to us and mess his boy's title opportunity up. Yeah, I mean, he has to be there for Tony D as well, obviously, yeah. I know, I reckon he'll be more, he'll have more of a game face on. Um, so close to such a big show. Yeah. Uh, so we get a promo from the family. Uh, Tony says, Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> so, disagree. Tony <laughs> says, Oh, two weeks from Saturday is going to be the biggest stand and deliver of all time. I get my opportunity at the NXT Championship. Now, as the Dom, Tiny is an ultimate premium, and the D'Angelo family is in a booming period of strength and aggressive expansion. Now, I brought in Luke Crucifino, because in that big brain of his, he's got a law degree and a sociology degree from Duquesne University. Now, joining uh, alongside Rizzo and Stax is a man who will bring wisdom to match the muscle. Can you just introduce him? Hmm? Yeah, but we want to give the big pomp and ceremony. <laughs> okay. Ilya knows well, wisdom equals power, and the Don has immense power. But that comes with responsibility, Spider-Man. Uh, that trickles all the way down to the rest of the family members. So please put it together for my new consigliere, Luca Crucifino. And Luca says, Thank you, Don. It is my honor. I pledge my loyalty to the D'Angelo family. So he says, oh, now that we got it over with, Ilya Dragunov, Mad Dragon, unbeatable, unbreakable champion. Ilya, I got respect. I got respect to you and your mother for moving over here from Russia for a better life. That takes guts. I got even more respect for what you're doing for your family. But over the past couple of weeks, I've shown you and everybody that Tony D is the one man who will break the unbreakable. So it's stand and deliver. Oi, oi, oi. Tony, Tony, Tony. I am on the big screen now. Yes. That's why I am talking. I came in. T- <laughs> uh, it's just a jarring transition. Yes. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. I came into your restaurant for a conversation and you left me alone on a bridge. With nothing but my own thoughts. Oof. You can feel this championship within your grasp. You can smell it, taste it, sense it. But this here is one power beyond your reach. And now? All right. (laughs) (laughs) And now, as I understood... Yeah. What? Yeah, no, that's, it's what he said, but yeah, well, you, sh- you should have written it better than him. <laughs> and now, as I understood, 
how this is going to go until stand and deliver. You, Tony. No, 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 no. Listen, you got it all wrong, okay? You have got no idea what I can do. You got no control. You see, there is so much space and opportunity between now and Philly on April 6th. In fact, I even spoke with Ava. She ain't got a surname. She's the Rock's daughter and the NXT general manager. And next week, I'm ready. You got a match with my underboss, Stax. Oh, my God. Stax. Match of the year candidate already. Stax is, He's gonna you know. Going to kick his ass. Well, Stax often regales us mm -hmm. and, indeed, the NXT viewers at home. He's been basically scrapping from a very, very oh, young yeah. age. Keeps saying, I remember the time when we dusted him, beat him up, and all the rest of it. So he can kind of handle himself. Um, he loves it. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, some might say that Stax might involve himself in some uh, shadowy activities, shall we say. Mm. Um, do you think he's going to be a bit scared on Tuesday? I think he, I mean, understandably, he'll have done his research uh, and seen what wars Dragonov's been through, but he's a man of supreme confidence, Stax. And, uh, you know, he's got great motivation. He kicks his ass, weakens him for Tony ahead of standing and deliver. Just think about the... The benefits that would bring to the family. Yeah. Uh, Tony continues. So, hell yeah. I'll see you at Stand and Deliver. Oy, oy, oy. Now, the real question is, what shape are you going to be in when we get there? That decision is completely up to you. But, hell yeah, I promise you. One wrong move, and you are going to wish you never messed with Tony D. And Stand and Deliver oy, 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 will be a burial. See you next week, kid. And he snaps his fingers and he disappears off the Tron. I love this. It was absolutely sensational. I thought it was piss poor. I thought it was really piss poor. Um, I don't understand what Ilya Dragunov says at the best of times. I don't understand what a lot of the NXT characters are getting at at the best of times. So I think the story is Tony D wants to convey to Dragunov, I'm in control of this situation. Yeah, I can beat you when I want, I could do worse if I so desired. Um, and then Dragunov saying, no, no, you're not in control. Mm. Not a very good story. We'll have to find out next week who's really the one in control. Indeed. It's not a good story. It's a great story. Is that what you're going to say? No. So. <laughs> oh, that's just reminding me. Are you kidding? I know it's just the two of us, but do you mind if I just no. nip out? What am I meant to say? What am I meant to do here? Well, you could, why don't you quickly talk about... I don't know what happens next. I keep telling you, I don't know what goes on on these shows. Be, I'll be two minutes. Um, if you just want to talk about what chance you reckon Tony D has of leaving San Diego yo, yo, with the world title, I'm going to nip out. I'll, be, I'll literally be, I'll be right back. So what do you reckon happens at Stand and Deliver yo, yo, on April 6th regarding the NXT Championship? I'll be right back. Okay, hi guys. Um, I am not Michael Hickenbottom, thank God. Um, so I do not know what the finish is to stand and deliver. Oi, oi, oi. Um, nor do I particularly care. Yeah, thank you. Hey, sexy. Oh. How's it going? What are you called? Uh, We're not cold outside. Oh, British weather's a little bit chilly. I was warm on the jet. A little bit cold in So here. why are you zipping up now and not outside? I always hear you Brits say you got to feel the benefit or something, so I'm zipping it up now. That's the opposite. Oh, oh. God damn it. What am I doing, huh? Anyway, Sage, what's the deal with sunglasses? You see, I've been seeing, you know, the, the Dijak's been wearing some goddamn sunglasses, and Vlad Wagner's <sighs> talking about you shouldn't wear them inside. You still got to wear them inside for some goddamn reason. What's the deal with sunglasses? Uh, let me first ask you a question. What do you think of Vaughn? I like the guy. He's got a he's got moxie. That's okay. what I like about him. Okay, cool. Um, ever socialize with him? Not not too much. I don't know if he's ever seen The Godfather, so not much we'd have to talk about. But uh, yeah, I like him. I, he could be good muscle for the family. Big guy. But uh, his manager, whose whose name actually completely escapes me. It's Robert Stone. Oh yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah, I hope those two can work it out. Yeah, me too, me too. Oh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Sunglasses. What is the deal with sunglasses? Well, sunglasses are a... Well, they, they serve two purposes. Um, sometimes just one. And they are a fashion accessory. Very few people don't look good in a pair of sunglasses. Um, so much so that some people, maybe me, I like an aviator, at the... I, I like any excuse... 
It could be bright but a bit cloudy, but I just think that oh, there's just enough sun to get away away with wearing sunglasses because I just think it's a good look. It's a good look. A lot of people do it. It's synonymous with like quite cool like looks throughout history. Um, you know, Cobra. Hmm. Co- Sylvester. It's not the Godfather, so you wouldn't have seen it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Kenny Omega. What do you think of Kenny Omega? I could do a bit of seasoning in NXT, and that guy is good to go on the main roster, let me tell uh, you. Ah, Starks. <laughs> well, um, also, apart from, you know, the the, the, the aesthetic, is that it really does help you not squint when you're in and under the sun. Because mm. you otherwise you walk around a bit like that, and I'm already, I'm already a bit molish, so it really helps me specifically, Starks, to wear a pair of aviators. And as well, I'm... Short sighted. That means I can only see things that are close to me. If I don't have my glasses on and I'm looking at like where does that bus take me? What's the name of that shop? I would walk into boots when I'm trying to go to Tesco. That's what I'm saying. That's how bad I am. So you can wear prescription sunglasses that help you both look good, uh see better in the sun without squinting. And uh yeah, those th- Two or three things. <laughs> Funny you say that, actually, because, uh, you know, boobs are a lot like the sun, aren't they? When you think about it. <laughs> oh. You can only stare at them for a short time, but if you wear sunglasses, you can stare at them as much as you want. So, three jokes, three questions for you. <laughs> you can't, though. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. No. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just for the that. No, just joking, kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stitch. Three jokes, three questions for you. Where the hell has he got that pamphlet today? Oh, he's working from home. And Willie? Uh, he said he had to go downstairs for, I f- completely forgot what he was. Nicholas, what's he gone down for? I can't remember what he actually said, though. I should, yeah, well, I've seen him on a Tuesday. Never get to see him that much on a Wednesday. That's all I'm saying. He's a pretty busy guy. He, he, um, I think hard he, worker deserves a raise, in my opinion. You think so? Yeah, I believe you so. think so? All right. Okay. Anyway. Three jokes, three questions for you. Sid, uh, why did the teacher wear sunglasses? Hmm? What do you reckon that is? The teacher wore sunglasses because his kids were too bright. Oh, you got a button for this, I do believe. Bingo! Yes! I do it without that prick. I'll be so happy, Stacks. Do you like Hamlet? I like that guy, nah, yeah. Okay, okay. I think he likes WWE too much. Yeah, is that even goddamn possible? Question joke number two. <laughs> Did you, uh, what do you call a skinny man in sunglasses? Hmm. You call a skinny man in sunglasses. Uh, John Lennon? That's not the air punchline. That was just an observation because he used to, he was looking in sunglasses. No ass, though. No, 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 no. Got no ass. Big no. long back. A big no long ass. back and a pair of legs. No ass. Let's say he hasn't got a great ass. You couldn't even put your head all the way up there. Absolutely not. There's nothing there. Sorry, what's the setup? What do you call a skinny man in sunglasses? Um, right. Aviators. Wayfarers. They kind of skinny puns in. Ray Bans. Nah. Oh, you were so goddamn close. Uh, what do you call a skinny man in sunglasses? Slim Shady. <laughs> uh, that's not bad at all. The, everyone can enjoy that, even the kids. A hey, little fun one for you, actually. A little bonus one I just remembered. Uh, uh, what kind of sunglasses does Ned Flanders wear? Huh? Oakley Doakleys. Bingo! Doesn't count, unfortunately. That was just a fun bonus one, of course. But qu- final question, final joke for you, CG. Did you... Uh, <laughs> What is the difference between a sexy lady and a pair of sunglasses? Huh? Um, right, if I get this correct, it would just be because I'm really trying to uh, sync up the wavelengths of Stack's thought process. Set up again. What is the difference between a sexy lady and a pair of sunglasses? Yeah, 
nothing about the seasons mm. and the summer. I don't know, Starks. What is the difference between a sexy lady and a pair of sunglasses? <laughs> oh, the punchline tickled me somewhat there. <laughs> What's the difference between a sexy lady and a pair of sunglasses? The sunglasses sit higher on your face. See you later, guys. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Stocks have broken me there, Paul. Uh, and I'd just like to say enjoy the rest of your day and uh bye stacks. Oh bye stacks. Oh, see you oh. the gym. Where were you? Oh, I just I went to get a door stop, but uh, What for? Just in case we needed it, but yeah. No need for that. So waste of time, I think. Yeah. Did I miss much? What? Did I miss much? Uh, he was on form today, like. Oh he I've heard from stacks. Yeah. Oh bloody hell. Every bloody week on Wednesdays, not Tuesdays. Um, right, we see uh, Riley Osborne getting ready for his Heritage Cup match. There's loads left of this show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thea Hale shows up. She apologizes for her behavior before on their date. Uh, she says she wasn't herself, uh, and she's kind of figuring out who she is, and that's kind of hard. And Riley says he get it, he gets it, and they can still be friends. Not the outcome I was hoping for, but it's, it's so weird. This right, mm. so you've got two like conventionally attractive, if you like. Young singletons mm. who are getting a bit of money for the first time in their lives, you know. There's that zoo element, that Olympic village. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they both have a clear burning desire for one another, mm. um, which they can't consummate mm. uh, because uh, Thea Hale gets given some bad advice and she plays hard to get and she's a bit rude on the date, but she th it's well-intentioned. She doesn't know any better. She's a bit young. Yeah. Now that's been clarified. Why aren't the sucking and? F <laughs> that's all this friendship thing. Well, if they've basically said though, right? Ah, oh, yeah, the date didn't go well. But that's only because, not because I'm not attracted to you. It's because I was in fact so attracted to you that I sought out advice in order mm. to be with you. The advice happened to be bad, but guess what? Like, and and. Friends, what's this about? Mm. Well, I think it's uh, temporary, but... If nah, this is it. I mean, it might be affected by the fact that Riley Osborne is shoot engaged in real life, but... Uh, yeah, probably the nice thing to do to just drop this asinine soap opera adjacent uh, story. But it's, it's not over. It'll lead into the Heritage Cup match we're about to get to. But if you're looking for romance in NXT, do not be concerned. I think I may have discovered something. Well, two things got quashed mm. on this well. night. Well... Well, well, well. Stick with me. You'll be fine, son. Uh, <laughs> there's a TikTok feud between Lola Vice and Carmen Petrovic about karate. I must have, uh, I must have fast forwarded a little bit too much. Then we got the Heritage Cup match, um, and I know how much you love rounds. Um, it was Drew Gulak representing the No Quarter Catch Crew versus Riley Osborne. Uh, Osborne looked good in here. Get Drew Gulak, obviously experienced professional, Drew, uh, but Riley Osborne held his own. Um, good bit of counter wrestling between the two of them. Osborne hit a running crossbody in a uh, over a two, and then got him in a wrist lock, uh, springboard arm drag, uppercut by Drew gets it back. He chops Riley, but Drew charged into an elbow. Osborne kicked him down, shooting star press one two three, yeah. one nil up. Who cares? I mean, I want Riley Osborne to win the Heritage Cup for Chase U. Another so you, so you care? Yeah. Okay. Um, Second round begins, Gulak bails, but there's Chase Shoot to say, get back in there. Um, but that allows Osborne to hit a big dive to the outside. Um, there's like roll-ups between Gulak and Osborne, but in the end, Gulak gets him. One, two, three. Is that kind of like up. a power bomb -y thing? Uh, Is that for the deciding form? That might be for the deciding Yeah, keep reading. Um, but after that, you know, backslide or uh, roll-up, sorry, uh, they both stand up to go back to their corners, and Drew Gulak hits a cheap shot. Needless, uh, as we go to a break, we come back round three they, again. They've nearly missed an entire round, um, but we get the, the the real excitement of round three towards the end. Thankfully, Ooh, what are the chances? Um, 
because Osborne gets caught in a submission, uh, the gulak. Um, but he, I, I remember when he introduced that mm-hmm. and how happy he was when he it was class two or five live. Who's the best thing on it? Um, the gulak. <laughs> Osborne holds on for the the round to expire. And uh, as Chase, as sorry, as round four begins, Chase, you are distracted by the arrival of one JC Jane and one Jasmine Nix. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Um, Gulak goes to the Gulak again. Yeah. Riley escapes, gets a two count off it. They trade pin attempts. Uh, Riley bridged out of a nice one, uh, got a backslide. Osborne. It's fighting with Gulak on the top rope and Thea Hale can stand JC Jane being out there and pulling faces and you know mocking Chase you no longer. They get into it. Unfortunately, the action spills into the ring. That distracts just Chase, not just Chase you and the no quarter catch crew, but also the referee. Uh, and Osborne's going for a superplex off the top, but Jasmine Nix hold on, holds on to uh, Gulak's foot, I believe, or Osborne's foot, I can't remember. But regardless, Gulak reverses the superplex in midair into a top rope crossbody. One, two, three. That was really good. Thea Hale co- accidentally costs Riley Osborne the Heritage Cup, basically. Uh, Drew Gulak retains for the no-quarter catch crew. So they can't be friends. Mm. How can we be lovers if we can't be friends? That's what uh, Michael Bolton says. Uh, yeah, some comment in pro wrestling here. Um, I like the finish. Yeah. yeah I hate the rounds. Yeah. Why well, have rounds? Drew Gulak's really talented. You can understand why Brian Danielson was having so much fun with him when yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. let him finally do stuff in WWE. Um, Brooks Jensen. Here we are. We've arrived. Brooks Jensen. I think, honestly, was this after an, a commercial break? Because mm. on the network, it's basically here. The, so on the network version of NXT, which we get as Brits, you get like, oh, NXT just on the network. Mm. Peacock, as you call it. And uh, it's press play, watch a show, adverts. And it's like, it's inserted where the the breaks would have been on USA. And because it's the network and there's no ads on it, for now, for what we have left, you see it the weekend, mm-hmm. WrestleMania advert again. And then you get like an advert for the bump mm-hmm. and then something else. And that's going skip, 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 skip. And sometimes I've fast-forwarded too far, and I think, more pertinently, do I care? Yeah. Will won't have missed any of this. Yeah. So this, I'm very glad that I get to... So you don't, you didn't see this. You I don't think so. Brooke Jensen and Fallon Henley in the car park. No! I Sit yourself down. Oh, you already are. Um, Brooks storming out of the building, obviously. And Fallon's... Why going, is he storming out? I, I don't know. I don't know why he showed up this week just to storm out. Yeah, like, right. Okay. <laughs> He's storming out. He's got his bag with him. She wants We're to separate ways to give you love. <laughs> she wants to check on him after last week. You're all right after last week. Where are you going? So he basically, he's been in the exact same mindset since last week. He's been stewing on it. Right, okay, okay. Brooks says, I'm done. Huh? I'm sick of everything here. I give you love. Fanon's like, come on, Brooks, don't be like that. I genuinely thought for a split second they were gonna kiss her, but it's, I was, maybe it's will, me willing it into existence, but still. Uh, I'm glad because I wrote this down for Bates. Do you put the Will and Wilborn? Um, she says, so she says, don't be like that. Brooke says, don't be like that. Really? Don't worry about me, okay? Everything's going great for you. Josh has got life figured out. But for me, I don't know what I want. She's right in front of you, Brooks. She's right there. I don't know what I want. But it sure as hell is not in this parking lot. Who's the only other person in the parking lot? It's Fallon Henley. And he doesn't want her. So. Well, he, yeah, but he's saying that. But is he saying that? He says he doesn't want Fallon Henley. He did, well, he didn't say that. He said, I don't know what I want. I, I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff, man. Um, this I, d- I do like Brooks Jensen. Yeah, guess what? Guess who's going to be featured on the preview next week? Him and this. So I don't know what I want, but I know what ain't in this parking lot. It is. That's the thing. So you think there's a bit of an irony there? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, and if, and, so you think that when they have full sex in about six months. In the parking lot, yeah. Oh, my God. It was in the parking lot. 
Uh, anyway, he storms off. Uh, actually, who turns out violently wasn't the only person in the parking lot because Kalani Jordan just shows up. Uh, she's pissed off with uh, Izzy Dem, Kiana James uh, about their attack, obviously, last week. Uh, and Henley basically says, because she's good like that, she's going to help her kick their ass. Um, we go backstage. Ava, she's not. Got, she's very busy. She's not got the surname. She's too busy for a surname. Yeah, yeah. She's the Rock's daughter and the NXT general manager. She's on the phone. Uh, and in Storm, Thea Hale and Duke Bloody Hudson. Uh, and Ava says, obviously, Thea Hale's unhappy about what happened for, for Riley. And she says, well, next week, Jasmine is going to have her first match in NXT against you, Thea. And she's jazzed and she storms off. Uh, and Ava says... Jasmine is... Uh JC Jane's new corrupted f- right. Okay, that's a lot of ta- a lot of uh, talent characters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ava says I've had my eye on you, Duke, uh, and I'm giving you a match next week that could put you into the North American title picture. Well, meet Madness. Is this uh, main event time? Uh, it's time for the Good Brothers <laughs> <laughs> versus Hank and Tank. Uh, I do, I do like the hot tag to Tank. Love him as a house of fire. Um, they b- they start match. After- fire was doused. When the club mm. grabbed a hole. Yeah. Um, it didn't go exactly as we said this was going to go. They brawl in the ring for a bit. Um, and uh, Hank Walker gets a one count from a suplex. But good brothers come in to slow it down. Throw him into the barricade and apron. And just, you know, get a headlock in the ring. Jeez, I can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Finally, Hank kicks Gallows, headbutts Anderson, and gets the hot tag to Tank, who comes in, cleans house, inverted atomic, atomic drop to Carl Anderson, springboard shoulder drop. Hank comes in, Carl Anderson gets thrown, Hank catches him and slams him down for two. I love that as a double team. Uh, they batter Gallows, they send him to the outside. Uh, Tank picks up Carl Anderson for their double team finisher, but Gallows pulls Hank to the outside. Carl hits a spine buster to Tank. Hank gets sent into the steps. Magic killer, one, two, three. Surprise, surprise, the Good Brothers qualify for that triple threat. Oh, God, this is this is so dull. I can't, I, res- I respect them. I, how do they keep getting away with this? They are so tedious. They put in no effort. And they just continue to find gainful employment when, if it was like, and now 2009, I get it. Mm. It's 2024, man. The standard's unreal. And the lights are bright in NXT, so you think, you know. You can't turn it on. It's one of the few issues with regards to NXT that you and I completely agree on. Yeah. Um, Trick Williams is backstage with Kelly. Um, she asks, asks him about having his first match since... Best <laughs> day. Trick says, yeah, I'm traveling live, but that's how I want it. Uh, Dark can have his metaphor gang out there. He'll deal with them. Yeah, and uh, sure will. Mello shows up, he's going to kick a Zayos. <laughs> Roxy's leaving. She gets asked about the NXT women's title match. She says, if Lyra won't do the right thing and hand her the title, she'll rip it out of her hands. Uh, <sighs> Kiana and Izzy. The show just doesn't end. Compliment uh, JC, Jane, and Jasmine for what they've done. JC says, I took Thea under my wing, and what did it get me? Nothing. They leave. Kiana and Izzy laugh about uh, Chase U. Oh, no, sorry, about Fallon Henley saving the day last week, and then Fallon and Kalani attack to presumably set up a match for next week, uh, which will also fe- feature, as we mentioned, Alpha Academy versus the Wolf Dogs, Duke Hudson versus Josh Briggs, Sean Spears versus Dijak, apparently. I, forgot, <sighs> I missed that. And most importantly of all, not only Thea Hale versus Jasmine Nix, but also Ilya Dragunov versus Stax. So when Ridge Holland says, I'm going to do what everybody else just tells me to do, it's not quit. He's going to he's gonna start beating up Sean Spears because mm. Dijak, he's hoping a wins and losses promotion mattering that mm-hmm. Dijak has to beat Sean Spears, otherwise he won't be in Meat Madness. Mm. At Stand and Live Royale. Main event time. <laughs> Trick Williams versus Noam Dar. Who? No, I'm Dar. Thank you. Trick hits some scoop slams early on. Uh, Dar gets an ankle lock, but uh, Trick fights out of it. Uh, he gets a back fist and a guillotine submission on Williams, but uh, the strength of Trick just powers him out of it. It's a great uppercut. Um, Dar took Williams off his feet with a kick in the corner. 
Uh, hard drop kick gets a two count for Noam Dar. In amongst all this, we're not going to break, but we go to picture in picture because <sighs> we see Carmelo Hayes' door and security knocking on it. I'm like, there's a match going on, guys. What are you doing? Um, there's like a tug of war when we come back to the match proper between Trick and Dar. Obviously, Trick wins that. Pop up, uppercut, sends Dar to the outside, and that takes us to a break. When we come back, big power bomb from Trick Williams only gets a two, though. They go back and forth. Uh, a leaping forearm clothesline by Trick stops Dar's momentum. Dar countered a spine buster into a DDT for a two count. It puts another ankle lock on, but uh, Williams reaches the ropes. Uh, Williams hits a bookend, which unsurprisingly, Booker T goes... <laughs> yeah, he likes it on commentary. Um, Lash Legend jumps up on the apron. There's another moment with Trick Williams. This time she goes to slap, slap him. just watch porn. You just want to watch people have sex, don't you? I'm a simple man. Uh, she goes to <laughs> goes to slap him, but he catches it. Dar uses this to hit a German suplex and a back elbow. A really good near fall in there. Uh, Dar goes for the Nova Roller, but the trick shot knee gets Trick Williams the one, two, three. Is it too reductive to say that in this match, like a lot of the offense looked like it connected? which in tricks matches, it's not always the case. That's fair. Therefore, you have an actual semblance of, oh, I believe that this mm. move has connected and can put you away. Combine that with tricks, just box office appeal, superstar charisma. Like, you got, I should have went to the dojo, like I said. Mm. Um, I got very excited because on SmackDown on Friday, there was two lots in different parts of the show of whoop that trick yeah. that chanted. Uh, but then Hamlet told me that might be also a local sports teams thing as well. Okay, but I like to believe it's just Trick Williams. Just Trick Williams. Uh, no, I'm not surprised if that was the case as well. He's the absolute king, but oh my god, that goddamn Jezebel, mm. Lash Legend, what's she doing? It, in the weirdest possible way, showing that she has feelings for Trick Williams, as many people in NXT do. They can't just say, "I like you. You're single. I'm single. I like." Yeah, you. I know, I know. Yeah, but that's telly for you. Isn't it? Hey. That's the magic of television. I don't know, it's just still got feelings for him, or was it a Jezebel ruse? Because well, well that's, that's, again, something you're going to have to tune in for next week, guys. No, I think um, NXT and its creative team are, are like really prehistoric, and they've just portrayed her as a Jezebel. Yeah, probably. As happens in all of pro wrestling. Yeah, probably that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say genuinely an ideal first opponent to bring Trick Williams back. No, Abdar's great. And, uh, He's made, really good, made, eh? Made Trick look great. And that near fall, I mean, you knew Trick Williams was going to win, but really good near fall towards the end there. Anyway, post-match, Trick gets on You the know mic. what? We take the piss. And we don't really take this seriously. Mm. An inspired bit of matchmaking on the part of Vic and Bottom. Is that Ava's surname? She's the NXT general manager and the rock star. I'm not sure how to mention that. Trick gets on the mic, challenges Carmelo Hayes to come out and fight him right now. Uh, no, me no Carmelo Hayes, but his four security members come out, surround the ring, uh, Nexus-esque, I suppose you could say. Um, and uh, then Melo's music hits and Carmelo Hayes is coming out. But you could, I suppose you could say, and I've written this as one of my notes for the podcast, so I'm just going to say it now. Trick Williams. Say like Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Right, any kind of bullet point, you'll just see it. Yeah. Trick Williams, Sidge, gets tricked because the Carmelo Hayes on the ramp is a decoy. One of the security guys is Mello. He attacks Williams from behind. He gets the remaining security to hold him up. He hits him with the running knee and he talks trash to a KO'd Trick Williams, stands over him as the crowd boos and the show goes off the air. Yeah, Great ending. Yeah, I got the gist of what happened and then turned it off. Okay. So I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to beat him up. All right, cool. Heat angle, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, no heat for me. <laughs> I like, mean, they, they could have stand and deliver oh, yo, yo, tomorrow for these two. The, the, it's they could have WrestleMania tomorrow for all I care. Oh, my God, could you imagine? No, uh, I don't know if I want it up tomorrow or not. I'm so excited for the build. Do you know what I'm more excited for, though? And that's our live show, which goes down on day two of WrestleMania. Tickets are still available. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets for It's Always Sunny at What Culture. Um... You will not be able to get tickets on the day. I should mention that, so don't, don't think of just showing up. Oh, yeah, no, you can't do that. Underground Arts at Philadelphia. 
Get your tickets now, whatculture.com forward slash tickets. Very limited merch will be available as well on the day. I have one which we can stuff into our suitcases. Um, and if people have been asking, I saw this, I read this on the news this morning, people saying, are we going to get to meet you guys if VIP tickets are sold out? Look, VIP tickets sold out months ago. They get the priority, but we will be in and around. So chances are, yes, you'll get to, to meet us. And get Not for as long. Well, no, exactly. No, I'm serious, not for as long. No, we have to get over tonight to a WrestleMania. But if you want to join us for that, whatculture.com forward slash tickets. A great show, just like this week's NXT. Let us know your thoughts on it in the comments section below or on X at whatculturewwe. Uh, watch there, you can follow both of us. You can follow Michael Sidgwick at... <sighs> not good, man. At M. Sidgwick. I'm spent. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. Follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. The Dynamite preview is available right now. And the three of us will be back tomorrow to review Dynamite. But for now, this being the NXT review, my thanks to Michael Sidgwick, to Stax. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.